In 1846, space expert and mathematician Urbain Le Verrier plunked down and endeavored to find a planet that had never been seen before by people. Uranus had been moving surprisingly as anticipated by the Newtonian hypothesis of gravity. However, the disparities were little. There was a contrast between the noticed circle of Uranus and the manner in which Newtonian material science anticipated its circle to be. In July, Leverrier recommended that the distinction could be made sense of by one more planet past Uranus and made forecast with respect to the circle of this already obscure body. Being a mathematician first and a second astronomer, he was not exactly keen on finding it with a telescope now that he would track down it in maths. And the errand of looking for it was passed on to German star gazer Johann Gottfried Gehl. On September 23, 1846, Gehl took a gander at the spot Leverrier had anticipated the planet would be and viewed as inside one level of the spot the planet Neptune. Relax, we are getting to planet Spock. So, having discovered a new planet by looking at the orbit of another, Le Verrier was called upon to take a look at a planet named Mercury. Mercury being so near the Sun is the most troublesome planet in our nearby planet group to notice. Le Verrier was interested with plotting Mercury's circle utilizing Newtonian material science. In any case, he proved unable, regardless of the amount he attempted. Mercury's unpredictable circle had neither rhyme nor reason. As per Newtonian hypothesis, the planet moved in circular circles around the Sun. However, perceptions showed that Mercury's circle wobbles more than could be presented by the gravity applied by the other known planets, like with Uranus. He accepted that this was because of another planet that was modifying the planet's weight. He in the long run named the planet Vulcan since he was a gigantic star journey far after the Roman divine force of fire. Soon astronomers began to report observations of this planet, the first being by Edmund Modesty on March 26, 1859. Nine months later, he altered Leverrier when he saw an article on his work based on Modesty's observations. Le Verrier calculated the predicted orbit of the planet, which he believed would make a transit two or four times each year. Others reported observing Vulcan but could be explained by sunspots, non-planets and observations of nearby stars. Le Verrier refined his calculations based on other observations, but nonetheless, it was never seen in any way that you could describe as concrete. The planet was not some short craze however, but endured for around 70 years. In 1879, papers conveyed reports that Vulcan would travel the Sun. In light of estimations by regarded stargazer Theodor von Apollozer, it won't ever show. It was looked for during essentially every overshadowing during this time, yet all at once never seen. All in all, why have not you learned of Vulcan when you were concreting on the eight planets? Since it particularly did not exist, the planet which was conceived out of science by Leverrier was scattered by another hypothesis of physical science, Einstein's hypothesis of general relativity. Einstein's hypothesis had the option to anticipate the way of Mercury, with next to no additional planets influencing its wobble. The theory puts gravity as a result of the curvature of space-time by massive objects with objects closer to the massive objects being more affected. So the changing or wobble of Mercury's orbit could be explained by the theory, while the outer planets, which are less affected by the curvature, are little affected by the new calculations, given their distance from the Sun. As such, Einstein's theory could explain both the orbit of Mercury and the orbit of Earth, Mars, Jupiter, etc., without recourse to extra planets planet Vulcan was no more.